listening fill in the blanks. Let's start. As a result of the growing research evidence of the importance of the first three years of a child's life and the disappointing results from Head Start, a pilot program was launched in Missouri in the U.S. that focused on parents as the child's first teachers. The Missouri program was predicated on research showing that working with the family, rather than bypassing the parents, is the most effective way of helping children get off to the best possible start in life. The four-year pilot study included 380 families who were about to have their first child and who represented a cross-section of socioeconomic status, age and family configurations. Most important of all, the traditional measures of risk, such as parents' age and education, or whether they were a single parent, bore little or no relationship to the measures of achievement and language development. Children in the program performed equally well, regardless of socioeconomic disadvantages. Child abuse was virtually eliminated. The one factor that was found to affect the child's development was family stress leading to a poor quality of parent-child interaction. That interaction was not necessarily bad in poorer families. The two world wars, which interrupted the supply of raw material from Japan, also stifled the European silk industry. After the Second World War, Japan's silk production was restored with improved production and quality of raw silk. Japan was to remain the world's biggest producer of raw silk, and practically the only major exporter of raw silk, until the 1970s. However, in more recent decades, China has gradually recaptured its position as the world's biggest producer and exporter of raw silk and silk yarn. Today, around 125,000 metric tons of silk are produced in the world, and almost two-thirds of that production takes place in China. Unique to the region, stepwells are often architecturally complex and vary widely in size and shape. During their heyday, they were places of gathering, of leisure, of relaxation and of worship for villagers of all but the lowest castes. Most stepwells are found dotted around the desert areas of Gujarat, where they are called Vav, and Rajasthan, where they are known as Bauri, while a few also survive in Delhi. Some were located in or near villages as public spaces for the community, others were positioned beside roads as resting places for travelers. Traditional varieties of sexually reproducing crops have always had a much broader genetic base, and the genes will recombine in new arrangements in each generation. This gives them much greater flexibility in evolving race responses to disease, and far more genetic resources to draw on in the face of an attack. But that advantage is fading fast, as growers increasingly plant the same few, high-yielding varieties. Plant breeders work feverishly to maintain resistance in these standardized crops. Should these efforts falter? Yields of even the most productive crop could swiftly crash. When some pest or disease comes along, severe epidemics can occur, says Jeff Houghton, director of the Rome-based International Plant Genetic Resources Institute. The banana is an excellent case in point. Until the 1950s, one variety, the Gros Michel, dominated the world's commercial banana business. Found by French botanists in Asia in the 1820s, the Gros Michel was by all accounts a fine banana, richer and sweeter than today's standard banana, and without the latter's bitter aftertaste when green. But it was vulnerable to a soil fungus that produced a wilt known as Panama disease. Once the fungus gets into the soil, it remains there for many years. There is nothing farmers can do. Even chemical spraying won't get rid of it, says Radomiro Ortiz director of the International Institute for Tropical Agriculture in Ibadan, Nigeria. Ants store food, 
repel attackers and use chemical signals to contact one another in case of attack. Such chemical communication can be compared to the human use of visual and auditory channels, as in religious chants, advertising images and jingles, political slogans and martial music, to arouse and propagate moods and attitudes. The biologist Lewis Thomas wrote ants are so much like human beings as to be an embarrassment. They farm fungi, raise aphids as livestock, launch armies to war, use chemical sprays to alarm and confuse enemies, capture slaves, engage in child labor, exchange information ceaselessly. They do everything but watch television. Educators are often much less aware of how quickly children can lose their ability to use their mother tongue, even in the home context. The extent and rapidity of language loss will vary. According to the concentration of families from a particular linguistic group in the neighborhood, where the mother tongue is used extensively in the community, then language loss among young children will be less. However, where language communities are not concentrated in particular, Neighborhoods, children can lose their ability to communicate in their mother tongue within two, three years of starting school. Forty sprayings of fungicide a year is typical, but despite the fungicides, diseases such as black cygotoka are getting more and more difficult to control. As soon as you bring in a new fungicide, they develop resistance, says Frisson. One thing we can be sure of is that black cygotoka won't lose in this battle. Poor farmers, who cannot afford chemicals, have it even worse. They can do little more than watching their plants die. Most of the banana fields in Amazonia have already been destroyed by the disease, says Luadir Gasprato, Brazil's leading banana pathologist with the government research agency Embrapa. Production is likely to fall by 70% as the disease spreads. He predicts the only option will be to find a new variety. Last year, a global consortium of scientists led by Frisson announced plans to sequence the banana genome within five years. It would be the first edible fruit to be sequenced. Well, almost edible. The group will actually be sequencing an edible wild bananas from East Asia because many of these are resistant to black cygotoka. If they can pinpoint the genes that help these wild varieties to resist black cygotoka, the protective genes could be introduced into laboratory tissue cultures of cells from edible varieties. These could then be propagated into new disease-resistant plants and passed on to farmers. Like, share, subscribe the channel and press the bell icon for further updates.